Interesting facts about famous people. 10. Underappreciated Westerns. Do you sometimes feel underappreciated? Well, you're in good company. Some of the Western genre movies feel the same way. They feel forgotten and neglected. So today, we will dust them off and give them some sunlight. Some of these gems date back to the 30s and up to the 70s. Many of these don't get talked about much nowadays. Fans of the genre will be familiar with some of them. They deserve to be more widely seen and appreciated. If you enjoy this video, hit the notification button to get my new videos. If you want to check out my many other videos, head over to my channel. The link is in the description. Let's get into it. Breakheart Pass, 1975. Director, Tom Grease. John Deacon is being transported as a prisoner on a train with supplies and medicine to Fort Humboldt, Nevada. The fight on top of the train was performed by stuntman Howard Curtis, doubling Charles Bronson, and Tony Brubaker, doubling Archie Moore, and was directed by stunt coordinator Yakima Kunut, his last screen credit in a career that lasted 60 years and included directing the chariot race in Ben-Hur, 1959. The Breakheart Pass is a location in Nevada's Rocky Mountains through which trains must pass. Deadlock, 1970. Director, Roland Click. A West German spaghetti western, it is perhaps best known for its soundtrack by the German rock band Can. The songs Can wrote for this film appear on their 1970 album Soundtracks. Today Deadlock is considered a cult classic. In a desert mining town at the end of nowhere, three desperate men fight over a suitcase full of cash. Sunshine's gun is the same Mauser model as the one that was used to build Han Solo's blaster in Star Wars. Episode 4, A New Hope, 1977. The Mauser automatic pistol was made in Germany until 1936. The Hired Hand, 1971. Director, Peter Fonda. Harry returns home to his wife and farm after drifting with his friend Arch and has to make a difficult decision regarding his loyalties. After the success of Easy Rider, 1969, Universal Pictures hit upon the idea of letting young filmmakers make semi-independent films for low budgets in hopes of generating similar profits. The idea was to make five movies for low budgets, one million dollars or less, not interfere with the filmmaker's process and give the director's final cut. The other movies were The Last Movie, 1971, Taking Off, 1971, Silent Running, 1972, American Graffiti, 1973. Ramrod, 1947, director Fritz Lang. A cattle versus sheepman feud loses Connie Dickinson, her fiance, but gains her his ranch, which she determines to run alone in opposition to Frank Ivey, boss of the valley, whom her father Ben wanted her to marry. She hires recovering alcoholic Dave Nash as foreman and a crew of Ivy's enemies. Ivy fights back with violence and destruction, but Dave is determined to counter him legally a feeling not shared by his associates. Connie boasts that, as a woman, she doesn't need guns, proves justified, but plenty of gunplay results. At the time of filming, Veronica Lake and director Andre de Tot were married. This film was their first screen collaboration. I've got some business to take care of. When I get back, that fitting better be over. My fitting will be over when Rose and I get things right, and not before. Back. Rancho Notorious, 1952. Director, Fritz Lang. A western based on the story, Gunsight Whitman, by Silver Richards. Vern Haskell, a nice rancher, 
seeks out to avenge his fiancée's death when she is killed during a robbery. His revenge leads him to Chuckaluck, Alter Keen's ranch, set up to hide criminals, and he finds more than he bargains for. Director Fritz Lang had originally planned to call this film Chuckaluck. However, studio head Howard Hughes insisted its name to be changed to Rancho Notorious. And when Lang asked why, he was told it was because non-Americans, Europeans, wouldn't understand what Chuckaluck, a gambling game commonly played in saloons in the Southwest, meant. Lang replied, well, it's a good thing that they'll all know what Rancho Notorious, which has nothing to do with anything in the film, means. I once saw three men fight a gun battle over you. All three of them were killed. Abilene, wasn't it? Yes. And I was in Hayes City. Union Pacific, 1939. Director, Cecil B. DeMille. One of the last bills signed by President Lincoln authorizes pushing the Union Pacific Railroad across the wilderness to California. But financial opportunist Asa Burroughs hopes to profit from obstructing it. Chief troubleshooter Jeff Butler has his hands full fighting Burroughs' agent, gambler Sid Campo. Campo's partner, Dick Allen, is Jeff's war buddy and rival suitor for engineer's daughter, Molly Monaghan. Who will survive the effort to push the railroad through at any cost? According to a news item in The Hollywood Reporter, Cecil B. DeMille directed much of the film from a stretcher because of an operation he had months earlier. However, studio records indicate DeMille collapsed from the strain of directing three units simultaneously and used a stretcher for about two weeks. Day of the Outlaw, 1959. Director, Andre de Tot. Blaze Starrett is a rancher at odds with homesteaders when outlaws hold up the small town. The outlaws are held in check only by their notorious leader, but he is diagnosed with a fatal wound and the town is a powder keg waiting to blow. Andre de Tot also had to fight off producers to shoot the movie in black and white. It was a story of tension and fear, survival in a prison of snow. Had I shot it in color, the green pine trees covered with snow, the soft glow of candles, the dancing tongues of flames in the fireplaces would have radiated warmth and safety and the joy of peace on earth. A Merry Christmas card from fairy tale land. The Eagle and the Hawk 1950. Director, Lewis R. Foster. 1863. Texas Ranger Todd Croydon and Union spy Whitney Randolph cross into Mexico to investigate a growing struggle for power between the French-supported Maximilian and the native-born Benito Juarez. In Mexico, they meet General Laguras, who is loyal to Juarez and the beautiful Madeline, daughter of or wife to the powerful and manipulative Basil Danziga. Croydon falls for Madeline, but soon runs afoul of Danzinger, who condemns him to be pulled apart between two horses. Seven Men From Now, 1956. Director, Bud Boticher. A former sheriff blames himself for his wife's death during a Wells Fargo robbery and vows to track down and kill the seven men responsible. Stars Randolph Scott, Gail Russell, Lee Marvin, Walter Reed. The first and one of the best Scott Boticher movies. Scott is out for revenge, looking for the seven men responsible for his wife's death during a robbery. It's a little more set bound than most of the other renowned movies, but it still packs a punch. It also has one of the best villains of the era in Lee Marvin, who is absolutely fantastic a silky menacing performance which keeps you on edge at all times.
Station West, 1948. Director, Sidney Landfield. After two U.S. cavalrymen transporting a gold shipment get killed, U.S. Army intelligence investigator, John Haven, goes undercover to a mining and logging town to find the killers. Stars Dick Powell, Jane Greer, Agnes Moorhead, Tom Powers. A really good Western, someone had clearly seen Dick Powell's definitive performance as Philip Marlowe in Farewell My Lovely, also known as Murder My Sweet, and got him to reprise it in this movie, which is really more noir than Western. Although not particularly well shot and a little set bound, it has an absolutely cracking script and terrific performances from Powell and Greer. Bill Ives puts on a pretty decent cameo too. Doesn't he ever stop playing? Sam, don't bother him, he's deaf. Where do I find the boss? First door, top of the stairs. Mick been around? He's indisposed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I appreciate your likes and subscribers. Hit the notification button to get my new videos. Take a look at my channel and check out my Facebook page. The links are in the description. I am Wrangler. Bye for now. See you again soon. Interesting facts about famous people.